Yeah, well, I'm not trying my case in the press. So he would have the right to possess them if they did, but I'm not going to address that. Instead of floodgates, I was going to say originally it will release the whirlwind, which is a politic, politic, a biblical reference. But I subsequently learned since I got here that that particular phrase has already been taken. So I figured I'd better change it to floodgates. Uh, there was a peaceful transition of power. So that's how the constitutional works. Okay. What happened now, on January 6th was not clear, peaceful. Is- about whether we are going to, as a nation, completely repudiate every one of our founding principles, uh, which is what the modern left wing, which is in control of the Democrat Party, believes that we are the root of all evil in the world and we have to be eradicated. Gordon is a supporter. Like, why do you think that Mike Pence didn't do it? Well, because Mike Pence is an establishment guy at the end of the day. And all of the establishment Republicans in D.C. bought into this very myopic view. Destroying the Republican Party, and what Trump is doing is destroying the inside the Beltway Republican Party and reviving the Republican Party in the hinterland, right? What they all consider to be, you know, deplorable flyover country. And this uprising that Trump got ahead of—he he didn't create the movement. The movement was there, yeah. and he saw it and got ahead of it. They're scheming. It they're didn't scheming. work, but they're scheming. Yeah, yeah. I liked it better when it was on that like po- that postcard. I thought that that was a quaint way to talk about overthrowing the US government, just put on a little card or whatever with seven points, but like each one has like three points. It's not really a seven point plan. Um, yeah, no, the entire thing is ridiculous. Uh, John Eastman does not believe that uh, if the Democrats had of the vice president spot and if they controlled 26 uh, state delegations, does he believe thus it is constitutional for the Democrats to win every presidential election? Does he believe that? Does he believe that Kamala Harris, as Jenk, Jenk says this a lot, so Kamala Harris could do this then? That's what you believe? She can just throw out whatever state she wants. And then if you just, if it happens that the Democrats control 26 states, then they win. Do you believe that? No, you don't believe that. Then you're not articulating a legal philosophy. You're not articulating a philosophy. You believe it's convenient. It's insane. Were any documents that former President Trump took with him to any of his properties, did they contain, any of them contain sensitive military plans? Yeah, well, I'm not trying my case in the press. So he would have the right to possess them if they did. But I'm not going to address that. It's one thing to take home top secret documents that the president has already seen. It's another thing to show it to randos to impress them or whatever reason he showed it to him. Second of all, he has said in the past that you can declassify things just by holding them or thinking about them or looking at them. Those are three different excuses that he's used, okay? And I, that's what I call the laser eyeing of the documents. I looked at, that's it, they're declassified. But in this tape, if it's true, and by the way, the CNN didn't listen to the tape. The leakers are just saying that the tape exists. They explain what's in the tape, and presumably they're gonna play it in court one day, presumably, okay? So I believe that that they're not gonna leak the, that information that's false. If they don't charge them though, then I'm gonna discount all of this, okay? Be quite frank with you, we changed what we were going to do on account that we thought that the House manager's presentation was well done. We still know what records are, right? On the thing you put the needle down on and you play it. You ever notice how when you're talking or you hear others talking about you uh, when you're home in your state, they, they will say, you know, I talked to my senator. Why is it that we say my senator? You know, I, I feel proud to know my senators. You know, not every Batman villain can be a winner, okay? He had the pinstripes, he was there. Like, sometimes, you know, they can't all be the Roger Stones, they can't all be, because that's the thing about Trump defenders and loyalists is like, if you're gonna be dumb, which a lot of them are, at least have conviction of your ignorance. And like, it was very clear that that Castor does not have the conviction of his ignorance. There was a, a lot of statements where he was like, well, I don't wanna take up too much more time. I should probably get going because, you know, my uh, my co-counsel is about to get up here and he, he will do well. You know, as a comedian, it made me feel like a like the opener who's like just kind of flailing, and you know they're they're the opener anyway. And you're like, okay, look, let me just bring up your headliner, and you know the audience is just not feeling it. I'm getting a lot of those vibes from Bruce Castor there. You threw a 16-hour presentation over two days, focusing on this as if it were some sort of blood sport. And to what end? For healing? For unity? For accountability? Not for any of those. They don't need to show you movies to show you that the riot happened here. 
We will stipulate that it happened, and you know all about it. This is a process fueled irresponsibly by base hatred by these House managers and those who gave them their charge, and they are willing to sacrifice our national character to advance their hatred and their fear. Excuse me. You know, he clearly believes his own BS, which is, you know, the, again, the least you can expect for a Trump loyalist who may or may not get paid. Uh, <laughs> like, kudos to him. Uh, the water moment was super funny. Then I learned that that was something that Orthodox Jews do. Um, obviously, he usually wears a kippah on his head. And so I think it has something to do with that. So I don't wanna be disrespectful. But also, let's remember, this is a lawyer who's defended the KKK before. This is a lawyer who tried to sue Jimmy Carter, former President Jimmy Carter, over his book about Palestinian human rights. Um, he is vehemently Zionist, vehemently pro-Israel at the expense of Palestinians. Um, he, I think a, a lot of uh, Jewish Americans and Jews around the world would have a big issue with um, the kinds of people that he's represented and their hatred, including the former President Donald Trump. One of the last and the ultimate requests that, that President Trump made was to pause the voting mm -hmm. for 10 days to allow the states to recertify or certify uh, or audit. And, and Mr. Pence rejected that as well. After that, there was a peaceful transition of power. Uh -huh. So that's how the constitutional works. Okay. What happened now, on January 6th was not peaceful. I want to ask you something about John Eastman because I, I, you've talked a lot about well, how a minute, he's, the, the, a, he's the, a respected constitutional uh, uh, right. attorney. The transfer he of power also, was certainly peaceful. Did you see what happened on January 6th? Did that look peaceful? And by the too? way, did, did you, I'm not saying that that was in any way um, inappropriate, but the ultimate power of the presidency okay. was transferred. I just want to quickly Biden. ask about John that. Eastman. Proof he won the state. Why did he threaten the Secretary of State with a criminal, uh, with with a with a criminal charge? <laughs> That wasn't a threat at all. What he was asking for is is for Raffensperger to get to the truth. He believed that there were in excess of, of 10,000 votes that were counted illegally. What the Biden administration has said is somehow President Trump obstructed a federal proceeding. That relates to what was going on in the states. And yeah. President Trump had every right to ask the Secretary of State, I believe that this election was conducted improperly. There are deficiencies here. I want to see See if there are more than 10,000 votes or whatever the number was that were counted illegally. Once again, that's core political speech. According to our justice system, everyone has the right to an attorney, even Donald Trump. But who the hell would sign on to that job, honestly? I mean, how do you sit there with a straight face and argue that Trump engaged in a peaceful transition of power? Till this day, he denies that he lost the election. Till this day, a peaceful transfer of power requires the individual who lost the election to agree that he lost the election and to urge his supporters to also accept that he lost the election. Trump in every action, in every word, in every social media post has been the antithesis of a peaceful transition of power. About whether we are gonna, as a nation, completely repudiate every one of our founding principles. Uh, which is what the modern left wing, which is in control of the Democrat party, believes that we are the root of all evil in the world and we have to be eradicated. This is an existential threat to the very survivability, not just of our nation, but, but of the uh, example that our nation properly understood provides to the world. That's the state. For the extreme right wing, which he's in, they really think the other side winning means that it, end of Western civilization, end of existence. And so that's why they think stealing an election, not that big a deal if the alternative is that Western civilization in America ends. You know, that would be a fascinating poll because I am curious, because I think, look, I think that there's a sizable portion of Trump supporters who genuinely think that Trump won the election, oh, right? Are you kidding me? A majority of Republicans believe that. No, exactly, okay, so but what, percentage of them know that Trump lost the election and are totally fine with him stealing an election. 